Hi, Joe here at Woolly Cottage. Um, I thought I would do a breed study. Now, I was going to do the Dutch Spotted, and there's a couple out there that'll be a bit disappointed I haven't done it. But at the weekend, a friend of mine down in the Cotswolds, um, she's been trying to find fibres locally to be able to get milled. And um, she sent me a sample of, hold on a minute, this one here, which is Alpaca Hayuka from a breeder um, that she knows. And it's it needs washing. Um, but it's in different colours, there's different colours within the actual pack. Um, there's an amazing condition from this breed. I mean, he's really, really looked after it. There's hardly, there's no VM in it whatsoever. Well, I'll say whatsoever. There's a tiny little bit there. Um, but I'm really looking forward to working with this and processing it. And that's what I thought I would do with this video. I would show you how I wash and process the fibre um, to make it usable. Um, so this is Haikua Alpaca, it's a shorter hair version and it's more adjacent to a wool fibre. It's a lot fluffier, um, clumpy, cloudy is probably the word, uh, the word I'm looking for, fluffy. Um, they're never really long with the fibres of their Haikua. You're probably talking about two, two and a half inches. I don't know how many times this has been cut but the, on this wool, this wool, this fibre for example, it is very short. Um, you can see it's got a natural, excuse the state of my dye stained fingers, I do apologise, but there is a crimp in the Haikuya. So it does spin up very, very much like a will, and I will go into the history of it in a second. Um, and then this one is the Suri Alpaca. So this one is for, it's, um, for, it's will, it's hair, it's coat. This one's really, really dirty. Um, it was like this when I got it, it's an absolute nightmare, it's hence the reason why I haven't sold it on the shop. I do have to sit there and pluck it. I do dye it and I do add it to my bats now and again, but I have to sit there and pluck it all out and everything out and it's an absolute nightmare. It's riddled with it. And if anybody could find me a cereal pack of breeder that has a lovely clean coat from their, their girls, um, give me a shout please, because I'm desperate to get some really good quality, uh, quality cereal packer. But this one's more sil silky and glossy. And you'll find that on the actual animal itself, it grows like a dreadlock. That's the appearance of it, and it's it's in ringlets and locks. So it's really, really, really pretty, and I love it. It's so soft, it's very silky to the touch, very luxurious. And alpaca is counted for its luxury yarns and fibres. So I'm going to go into the product of it, and you'll see some pictures while I'm going through this. So the history, American Indians of Peru used this fibre for fabrics for a thousand years, about 5,000 years it was, before being introduced into Europe as a commercial product. Alpaca was a crucial component of ancient life in the Andes to provide warmth, clothing and meat. Inca fact, so the Incan culture involved the alpaca and also the llamas, the guanacos, in ritual sacrifice, methods of killing varied based on the gods that they were sacrificing to, the festival that was um, being celebrated at the time and even down to the colour of the fur played a decision in which animal was to be used. First imports to Europe were in Spain, Germany and France and the alpaca has been noted to be first been spun in England in 1808 but it was condemned to being unworkable. They just couldn't figure out how to do it. Then in 1830, a gentleman called Benjamin Outram from Halifax attempted for a second time and still couldn't figure out how to spin, spin the fibre and make it workable. This was probably due to the style of fabric that was woven at the time, which is called a camlet. Not quite sure what that is, but I will find links and I'll write it down in the descriptions. Then in Bradford in 1836, Titus Salt, who later became Sir Titus Salt, figured out with the introduction of a cotton warp usage that alpaca mohair was able to be um, to create a usable cloth as a weft. No one knows where he got the idea or the solution from, but a plain cloth came from the production of these fibres using a cotton warp. Um, this ended up becoming a popular dress cloth, but the breeder couldn't keep with the breeders couldn't keep up with the demand that England were looking for. They brought over alpacas to England to acclimatise them but it didn't work. They even tried in Europe and Australia back at that time and they just couldn't get to breeding these animals. 
So it became quite, though it was um, very popular for tailors to use in suits, they did find that they just couldn't keep up with the demands. They even cro tried to crossbreed with sheep. How unbelievable. They did manage to hybrid um, a breed, create a hybrid for breeding from an alpaca and llama and it was created in Liverpool but the fibre from the offspring was just too short and it wasn't viable again. They are now commonly bred in US, Canada, in the UK mostly by hobby breeders, New Zealand, Germany and other countries throughout the, uh, the world. Valued for their low environmental impact and surge in alpaca clothing is great for outdoor accessories like hats, gloves, sweaters, mittens, um, what else, sweater, jock, coats, that sort of thing, as well as blankets and throws. Um, but they've also been discovered that they're brilliant for sportswear for outdoor enthusiasts that like the warmer, lightweight clothing where they're training. They're common to be blended with a merino to help cut costs. The alpaca 100% is better for more luxurious products. And then also in America, I'll just find that note now. In America, they um, created um, cooperatives for mills because um, it actually works out cheaper for them to do it in bulk. And they just split the difference between them all or who's brought in what weight wise for the alpaca to be milled into yarn. And um, then uh, December 2006, the General Assembly for United Nations proclaimed in 2009 the International Year of Natural Fibres to raise a profile of animals such as the alpacas and other natural fibres. The alpacas featured, on, here's a, fa a famous fact for you, featured on both the Peru's coat of arms and the national flag. The alpaca is smaller than the llama and key difference in them is their ears on the llama are long curved banana shaped ears and the alpaca is shorter straight and slightly pointed the llama also in difference to the alpaca can get to anywhere between 90 to 158 kilos in weight they have been known to reach up to 181 they grow to approximately 46 inches tall they have a longer face they're very independent which means that they will protect themselves and they are actually used for, like um, like you get the guardian dogs, well they're used as guards for livestock and they will protect them. They're a pack, anim uh, pack carrying animal and they can weigh, um, carry a weight of at least quarter of its body. Uh, the alpaca, the difference with that is it can get from 45 to 68 kilograms in weight. They only grow to 36 inches um, and they have more hair on their face and they're a herd animal. Now, I have dyed um, Hayuka fleece before and I'll show you in a second. And I found that it felted. Um, so I find that if I'm actually going to want to dye it, I just spin it into a yarn and then I dye it afterwards. And then if there's any shrinkage or felting, it's happening whilst it's already a yarn, which makes it a lot stronger as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so on my notes, okay, I can't remember all these facts and figures and everything else. So the alpaca and the llama and it's their cousins. So the guanaco, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, is a cousin from the alpaca. And then the vicuna is a cousin from the llama. And I think they're like slightly smaller and more delicate versions of these animals. Um, now you've got two breeds of alpaca you have the haikua alpaca which is the shorter more wool like hair with a crimp okay so it looks like this as i shown you earlier on it's a lot more fluffy these this wool is very very short and i will blend it with a nice fiber so i can spin and process it so yeah it's very very short this cut but it's got a very fluffy consistency to it like a very lovely fine wool very 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 soft and it does have a crimp in it so potentially if you could get a first cut on one of these i'm trying to have a look see if i've got any longer pieces now see there you go there is one and you can just make out the wiggly line the crimp that's in this fiber okay so you can treat it almost like a wool and it's 
it's milled like a wool to make a yarn. Now you've got the Surrey alpaca, as I've said, I've had this stuff for donkey's years and I still haven't got through it and I am desperate for a, a Surrey alpaca. So this has a real, can you see that shine on there? Silky texture. You could spin this up into a very, very fine thread and use it almost like a silk for embroidery. Okay, can you see that shine on there? It's very has a very very silky consistency. This fleece is this wool coat is really really dirty and full of VM, and it's really I don't feel comfortable using it. It always makes me feel a little bit scratchy. So anyway, so as I say, the 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 hair from the haiku has a very sheep like look, very fluffy, very cloud like. Um, the Surrey alpaca is actually le less than 10% of the alpaca population in South America. There's, they're very rare to have, but when you do see them, they're very noticeable because their coat is completely different from the haikuya. It grows like dreadlocks. You've got these long ringlets and locks of, of wool or hair, and um, it has a dreadlock look to it. Um, both can be processed in worsted uh, millings. So worsted means just packing more air into there and crossing over the fibres so that they'll they'll sort of stick together more consistently. Okay. Um, now the process is, becomes a lightweight yarn or thread if it's done with a Surrey alpaca on its own. Whereas the Haikuya alpaca, you get more of, um, you can get different densities, different weights of yarn. So you can literally go from a sports weight thread, uh, sorry, a fingering weight into a, um, probably a DK weight would probably get a really good consistency and it'd probably be more of a worsted um, wool, so that more rustic sort of look for a thicker jumper or coat or whatever it is, or blankets even. So the wool is soft and durable and really, really silky and it's got such a lovely, luxurious feel to it. Haiku is similar to a sheet wool and in look it's warmer and it's not prickly um, like some wools are. They don't have any lanolin at all and because there's no lanolin and it doesn't have a prickly sensation to it, it's counted as a hypoallergenic fibre. So that's good for people that have um, allergies and things like that. It's naturally water repellent, it's fire resistant, um, and it has a natural crimp in there. This is the haiku that I'm talking about here. Also, it's a natural thermal insulator for the animal when it's actually on them. It resists solar radiation, so the effectiveness that it actually aids the animal in the most extreme of climates, so whether it's the hottest day or the coldest day of the year, that animal from this fur is completely protected, which is brilliant for us. Um, the Surrey doesn't have a crimp, which makes it better to spin yarn for weaving, whereas the Haikuya is better for knitting. Uh, what else? Armani, the designer Armani, he uses the wool, the Haikuya alpaca and the Surrey alpaca in his cloths for making men's and women's suits. So there you go, it's a little bit of a tidbit. Um, now, I did look for some actual technical information. So, apart from its glossy shine from the Surrey, it, um, now, depending on how you process the Surrey alpaca, if you do it in the worsted fashion where the fibres are crossing over from each other, um, it actually reduces the shine on it, but it's still got that lovely silky feel, but it's going to dull down the actual glossiness of that fibre. Um, the diameter of the fibres as well from the alpaca are hereditary, exactly inherited traits like wool. So you can't, there are ways to measure it. It has a higher tensile strength. Processing the slivers of an alpaca with a roving on the alpaca blending together helps for a better durability of yarn as well. Um, so that's about it. That's all I've managed to find in information. I did look for some funny stories, but I couldn't find any. But I do remember distinctly finding um, or watching a video, and it was based um, in Peru, and it wasn't even that long ago, where a lot of the children are gifted um, an alpaca as a pet, more for them to 
learn about animal husbandry and looking after their creature and they sleep with the rest of the herd as well anyway but it seems to be a tradition that that's what what happens over there with them you imagine imagine having high haiku alpacas out the back garden walked on leaves i think that i am just about done with the information for that um yeah that's about it quite a quick sharp one i've slotted in some pictures in between a little bit of um no music but i thought just a quick breed study now what i thought i would do next is go pop downstairs show you how to wash your fleece and then the next time I, i'll do a part two to this and i will actually blend it up and spin it off and then see how it reacts with dyeing now as i say i i have dyed the suri alpaca before and i've been fine with it it's not felted but it will felt quite easily there is the suri alpaca that i've dyed and i like in and you can tell it's it's that um, and I do, as I say, if I'm going to put these in bats, I have to sit there and pick all the bits out. It's so flaming and annoying. But there. So I'm not going to sell the, the haiku on my website, but I may, or on its own, um, I might do some samples of 50 grams of it blended so you can have it for any stash, but it'd be like a 50-50 sort of ratio. So maybe 25 grams of a merino blended with 25 grams of the haiku alpaca that i've got here i wouldn't dare i mean if deborah if you're watching this if you want a sample of the suri alpaca i'll send you it if you order the carded bat when it's ready probably in the next couple of weeks um on the website i wouldn't sell it look at all I, I would really be ashamed to sell this but if you wanted a sample to have in your sample book then let me know when you order this and i will put it in there like a i don't know a 10 a 10 gram sample of just some bits so you can just put them in with your breed study books um if i can get a hold of a breeder that can give me some cleaner suri alpaca um coats then i will put them up on the website and sell them um, as they are and then you can just process it yourself but I'm not happy to think yeah, I'm quite happy just to gift you a little bit but yeah so you know who you are I've mentioned your name shouldn't have really done it but you you know what I mean so yeah so I'm gonna now go downstairs um, and give you some tips now unfortunately Muggins here can't find her laundry bags you know those mesh laundry bags grab yourself a couple of those if you've got any lying around at home if not, get yourself down to the cheap budget shop down in town and go and grab a couple because they're coming really handy for washing this fibre. Right, so we're downstairs again. Okay, so you can find video tutorials on YouTube if you just type in how to wash alpaca. There is a lady that, I can't remember the name of the account, but I think it's the Alpaca Farm or something like that. Um, she's long dark hair and she just does it in a sink um, and this is how she does it and it's how I process mine before you think about dyeing any of it so what she would normally do is use laundry bags like a um, lingerie bag where you stick in them in a, me a mesh bag now I can't find any I have got a couple around here I don't know what I've done with them as usual I don't separate my garments that much I only bought them for washing wool so if you've got any of those, um, I'm just going to go and grab a old neck curtain that I can see on top of the fridge and I'm going to use that and I'm going to tie it up like an old tramps bag. So bear with me a second. And I suppose, really, I could quite easily sew this up. Let me just see if I can split it. Threads are going to tear. Oh, it's always the same when you're trying to do something practical and Joe just decides at the last minute to do something else. 
Right, let me see if I can find a turn. There we go. Straight down the middle and I can make a bigger one. And I suppose, really, what I could do is sew them up into bags. I might do that like when we get the sewing machine out and have out have a go at literally just making some bags for this certain occasions when you've got some delicate wools that you want to wash. So what I'm gonna do is just place it, I'll tilt you down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Um, the water's running now. Now this lady that I watch, she says 120 degrees because that's how hot her water gets. I'm sorry but I think that's far too hot. I'm just doing the same temperature what I would do if it was my wool. And I'm going to add shampoo to it. Okay. So a nice blob of shampoo. And I can just get that. There we go. I don't want it to bubble in the water. But I want enough to clean. I can smell that now. So I'm just going to give this water a quick swirl around and that's really, really hot. So she uses shampoo and so do I because I find that it works. So what I'm going to do is just try and get this to behave itself. Alright, there we go. No, it doesn't want to stay on. Of course it doesn't, Joe. And I'm going to grab myself just some small handfuls. See, there's different colours of this. An alpaca can actually be bred for its distinct colours. So if you want a, an alpaca that's only got brown um, coat on it, then you're going to just breed it with more of that colour and they'll get the same colour every time. But these, this one's fawn and there's cream in here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie it up, try and find the corners. And just do an old picnic sack sort of knots in the top and this should help me keep this fiber in place without it fell in and I'll do that again with the other piece just move that to one side for a second and I'll do that exact same thing again so I'll take out some more of this You don't want to do your fleece all in one go anyway. I mean, I've done videos on this before and I just find it easier to do it in smaller, manageable amounts so that you can dry it, especially at the moment. It's Bank Holiday Monday. I'm doing this video. It was supposed to be sunny this afternoon and it's decided, no, it's Bank Holiday Monday. I'm going to ruin it for everybody and we're just going to have cloud and overcast skies. So luckily I have a fire, a coal fire, so I burn my coal, my wood, and it helps me get my fleeces and my wools all dried up. So now that they're in these bags or in your laundry bags or whatever you've got to hand, I mean, I don't suppose you can use a pillowcase, but then I wonder if the, wool, uh, the dirt molecules will be able to come out. And I'm literally just going to place that on the top there. Place that on the top there. And I'm going to push them down just so the air bubbles start to come out. And again with this one here, that's really hot that is. I'm going to use something to poke it down with because that's really hot for my hands. So if I use my wooden spoon and I'm not going to touch it, I am literally just going to leave it in that hot water for about 30 minutes I'm going to go off and leave it I'm not going to agitate it I'm not going to swish it around the sink I'm not going to do anything like that and I've got a f there we go there's some of the dirt starting to come out now when I'm pressing it down with a wooden spoon I'm literally just going to let it sit and soak in the water for 30 minutes okay and then we'll come back and see how dirty the water is and we can gauge roughly how many more times we need to do this. Right, so there we go. Look at the cold water after half an hour. 
So because the world should still be warm, I don't want to drop it out of the too much too quickly. I want to try and keep the heat in there because you want the world to go back in the hot water again. But I don't want the water from the tap to pommel the actual salt makeshift bags that have got my alpaca in. So I'm just waiting for this to drain off. And I will squish them to one side as I do. Okay, if I put them on the side now, they're going to just... Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to rinse away this water, the dirt off at the bottom. Okay. And I'm just going to put my plug back in. This will just stuff at the side. So it's still coming out now if I squish it a little gently, like that. Ever so gently. I don't want to put too much effort into doing that, otherwise I will felt it. I'm just going to turn this water down a tad so it's not too hot. And I'm just going to let that soak again for another 30 minutes. Right, so the wrapped up bags of alpaca have been washed twice and rinsed twice to get the cloudiness out from the dirt particles and it's just really clumpy because it's all wet but it does pull apart quite easily now you have two options to do this bit next you can either get a big towel place your work, your fibers in the middle along the edge and then roll it over and just squeeze it and get the extra moisture out and then leave it on a drying rack outside or indoors if you've got one um, some people stick it in the washing machine on a spin cycle I am lucky enough to be gifted this spin dryer the other day so it's centrifugal I'm just going to stick this bit in the middle down the bottom of it I've got my drip tray in I'm just going to lock it and it is switched on. Where's the button to get it going? There we go. So it should start. There we go. There's the water coming out of it now. And that should be practically dry by the time all that water's come out. And then I can just leave it to air dry overnight and let the start with it tomorrow. We'll pour out some water in the bottom there. Nearly done. So a bit more moisture coming out of that. It only needs a few minutes in this machine. And that's as near as still a little bit of drip coming out. Give it a few more seconds and then I will turn it off. And fingers crossed it won't be felted. That's the drip, drip, drip. Still, still a bit more coming out. There we go. So it's not felted. It's coming apart oh really lovely and that's as clean as I'm gonna get it but there is different pieces in there that are more fawn than they are white so I think when I wash the rest of it I will try and divide them into darker and lighter sections it does have bits of VM in there but I think I will just um, take those sections out but there's not much there's some of the longer pieces on there quite pleased with the way that's come out it's really great lovely and shiny white so the next part of my video I will wait for this to dry now and then I'll blend it up show you how to blend it so it's blended through thoroughly a bit like the llama batty club that I did last week so I'll do that process and I actually did something did, was it yeah it was last week I did a video last week on on this channel um, about how I blend up the blending double carding and adding fibres in to make sure that they're in there and have decent consistency and I did it on a blending board as well 
So I will do the same process with this lot, then I'll spin it off and then we'll dye it and see how it looks. I may even do a sample dye in the pot just to see how they come out and show you why sometimes it's easier just to spin it off, It'll cut, blend it and card it um, and then spin it off and then dye it, especially if you want different effects at speckling or something like that on your wills. Um, but yeah, so that's what will be on the next part of this video. So I hope you enjoyed that so far and I will catch you on the other side. Hi, back again. Right, so we've done the washing, the history, and now I'm just about to do the carding of this alpaca fleece. So I have got some, um, I think it's 21 micron count merino. So I've been doing a bit of practicing while I've not been here, just to see what ratio was the best one to do for this because I've carded up some alpaca here. Um, I've just run it through once just to break it up and I'll show you why. So in my dried up pieces of alpaca, it took a couple of days for it to actually dry um, in the in front of the fire in the nets I hung, I hung them on a clothes horse and I tied the edges just to open up it took a couple of days now an alpaca fleece a uh, fleece coat um, is probably the best way to describe it um, should be at least three inches plus in staple length on a haiku um, on a surreal alpaca it should be about nine um, inches in length in staple locks okay so this will well fiber sorry um is about three inches so if i just pull that out and you can see i'll put it in front of me so it, there are three inch pieces but then i do have pieces where let me just see if i can find you some they're literally just an inch and a half long and then i've got these tiny little pieces that are an inch long and it's such a mixed ratio that I can't do a spin where I could fold it all from my fingers. So what I've done is um, blended it up. I've carded the actual locks, which I'll show you how I do it now. Um, and then I take that back just the once off the drum carder. Then I'll split it into four sections, get my roving and do four sections. And I've ended up with a 50-50 um, a blend. So I'm doing 50 gram bats and they are 25%, uh, sorry, 25 grams of alpaca and 25 grams of wool, which gives me a 50-50 ratio and it's spinning up really lovely. And because of the so many short hairs in there, those inch long locks and the, then the inch and a bit and then the three inch, I have ended up with a halo on my yarn and I'll show you what I've ended up with in a bit. Um, but I'll just get this carded off and I'll show you how I've done it. Really lucky with this though, it cleaned up a drain. Um, I think I ended up rinsing it off three times washing it twice with shampoo and it smells gorgeous um just a dash of shampoo enough just to help loosen out the dirt and the sand and everything else that was in there and put some condition back into the fiber because it's really really soft and lovely um there is a mix it's not all from the same animal um there are some that feel quite coarser and older you do get guard hairs in alpaca fiber as well and yes there can be a bit of a pain but i have noticed when i'm spinning they're so obvious, they're a lot, lot um, bolder white. And I know that sounds really silly. And if I come across one, I'll show you in comparison. But anybody that's used um, Herdwick's or I think another one might be Dorset Horn or Welsh Mountain, you'll find that even though it's a white fleece, you'll find some section pieces of wool or fibre that looks really, really bold white. And it's quite thick um, in look like um in density and it's because it's actually hollow inside and it is a guard hair and it will be quite itchy upon your skin and usually they fall out with just spinning um the you can buy these wheels from companies and you will if you really 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 don't want them in your in your work you want to pick them out your rovings you will find them you might end up with like 10 15 percent missing from your roving from sorting out those guard hairs but anyway I'll waffle on about this topic. Um, I just find it's easier just to pinch them out as I'm spinning or if I see them when I'm, I'm carding up as well. They are very obvious. I'm trying to see if I've got any on here. Not offhand, I can't see it straight away. But I've got these lovely fawns in this from a fawn alpaca. And then I've got the whites. And then I've got a bit of a paler one as well. Um, I don't think there's any dark tan in the fleece, that uh, the coat that I've been sent. 
So I'm just going to tilt you down. You can see me just putting this through in small sections. So I literally just pull it apart, loosen any bits of VM that could be in there. Just take that out. I'm literally just going to take the clumps out because sometimes you could be out there all day. And look at the size of some of those pieces. They're really, really tiny. So it is creating a halo when I'm spinning this up. And then just tease it open and then feed it through. And it just takes a little bit of time bit of patience just got another piece of VM in there so I'm just going to pinch that out it's actually a bit of stone and some more it'll fall out as you're carding it anyway it's, it's not a major hassle but you just want to just tease it open so you don't end up with clumps of fibre on your drum carder like that until I've got it all done. So this one's quite coarse. And it does feel like that that could be quite a lot of um, guard hair in there. It is really quite coarse in comparison to the other fibre that's a lot softer and it's got a bit of a crimp, whereas this one hasn't. It's very, very straight. There's hardly any crimp in there. And I would say that'll be the, the tail end of the top part of the coat. So I'll actually just put that to one side. Where's my bin? Behind me. And I'll throw that in there. Tease that open and those little tiny bits as well and just keep feeding it in there some bits might feel like they're bumping and the last piece see what I mean about how small they are so there's been a second cut in this in this blend. Um, very very grainy. It hasn't all come out in the wash, but that's the whole. That's the best thing about carding. It will come out as you're carding through. So I literally just take this off. Roll it around. And there we go, one little carded um, alpaca fleece. Now you could use it as a giant roll lag and spin straight from the middle if you wanted to and you didn't want to blend from it. Um, you can spin them in roll lags, peonies. You can spin them over your finger so you fold it over and then spin like that as well. But as I say, I just found it is far too fiddly to do that this time around with this fiber. Um, there's too many short ends in it for me. If it was quite a, a continuous graduation of cot, then I would probably do it as 100% will, but I'm not. I'm quite happy just to do what I'm doing. So I've just got a piece here and I'm just gonna split it into four sections, get my will, split that into four sections as well. Lay my first piece down. Add a 
adding the foot alpaca that I've just carded. Another piece of roving. Now I'm using merino because it's just what I had to hand. But you can use anything. You can use South American top. You could use Como if you've got. If you're lucky, you get a hold of some of that Como that America that seems to be quite popular over in America. You could mix it with a Rambouillet. That'd be really, really nice. Um, BFL for definite. Mix that up with a BFL. Um, you could go for a, a lovely. Oatmeal BFL would look great with it. If you wanted to add a little bit of um, non heat bondable um, Angelina to this, um, I would do it now. And I say not. Um, non-heat bondable because i'm going to dye this afterwards now if you use heat bondable um angelina it you you trigger the effect that it may actually ruin the structure of those fibers because they are like they are a nylon fiber um and they will melt together or create some sort of cr um i don't know, crunching sort of sensation and you will but i would add in the angelina at this point while you're doing it the, the first time carding if you want a little bit of bling and you want to spin up an off wool in a say a fingering weight or something like that and um, so you can create yourself a gorgeous lovely wrap um it would look really really pretty so i'd put something like that in here now or silks you could add in um, coloured silks if you want to keep the wool neutral and not actually dye it up afterwards. Um, so I've got one more piece that I need to smuggle into here. And I'll give it another card in. Take it off the carder and just try and lift those bits of fibre off because they're very, very sticky in the sense that um, so fine a fibre that trying to get them off the drum carder without having to use a little carding device, which I will do now because I can catch the last of these fibres and add them in on this second blend. go Let's take that off there next I'm going to do the exact same process again but the wheels now blended into two you can see all those different tones with the alpaca in there so the alpaca and wool blend I'm now going to cut, put it into strips Sorry, over here I'm going to just tear it into small strips thin strips about an inch and a bit long if I can, there we go. I would do the same process if I was carding fleece as well. If I was doing sheep fleece, I would do the exact same process for carding and double carding. So I'm going to lay one flat, top and bottom, lay on the drum carder. Okay. and then I'm going to do one where you can actually see the layers running through and I'm just going to let it go in that way just tease it open a little
Next one I want to lie flat again. And then that one on its side. I'm just going to give it a quick card in down so I can pop a bit more in. I always find the more that I card my fibres, that piece that I pulled off, the more I card my fibres like this, like um, double carding or triple carding, the more air I find gets into the actual fibres so this one was on its side I think next yep and the next one's flat so lying on top and bottom so I'll take this one for that one there we go and just open it up a little bit so I can spread out the fibres And notice that by crisscrossing these fibres and pulling them out on themselves while they're in small sections helps create that worsted effect in your fibres. And when you're spinning alpaca, you like to spin in a worsted yarn. So you're always going to have that feel of, um, uh, what's the word, rustic, that rustic look about it when you're spinning up alpaca. There we go. I'm just going to put a bit more in here. This is the last piece. One more card in because it's caught on my liquor. Okay. So I'm going to take that off now. Now this is the level at which I've I've taken them off the carders. Um, previously when I've spun up the other wool all the other bats that are downstairs we've been spinning them off the last couple of days now, this is part one of the video part two I shall film and they'll both get released about the same time on Wednesday um, so that is twice carded well three times if you think that you've carded the alpaca before you've blended it then you blend it with your wool and then take it off and then blend it again to get the fibres to amalgamate into each other a little bit more. You could do it a fourth time if you really felt it needed to and if you felt like you were still finding sections of fibre clumping together. But you can just make out, though the light's not great, um, that there is slightly fawny colours all popped in there. Um, I have got clumps here, which I would probably card again through um, but I'm quite happy the way that I've been spinning it up. I've got a piece of grass in it. I need to just take it out. But I'd be quite happy the way it's been spinning up. So, yeah. So, the next video, which part two, breed study on the alpaca, I will spin this off and then you'll see me um, dyeing it. And then I thought it would be nice to do an actual project. Usually, sorry. Usually when I do my breed studies, I, usually, I try to think of a project or something to show exactly what you can do with the fibre. So I thought this time, I'm a novice knitter, I love pattern work and I have got a brilliant book downstairs um, that generally calls for like DK worsted and iron weight and I thought well once this is bit, it's coming out more of a, a worsted DK or a worsted weight yarn downstairs with thin and thick sections, I'm not a perfect spinner but this has been quite a weird um, fiber to spin up because of all those short bits so I've tried my damnedest I really ideally would love an electric eel a nano wheel um, so I can try and spin more consistently not for the joy of it but for the practicality so I can actually sell hand dyed hand spun wool it'd be brilliant if I could do that but when you're hand spinning anyway um, some people can spin consistently all the time uh, some people do it naturally. Some people have been practicing for years to get that right consistency. Now and again, I can get it perfect and bob on. Um, but sometimes you've got to accept that there's challenges with different types of blends and wills that you're using. So, yeah, just take it as it is. My videos, though I understand the technical aspects of it, and there are times when I'll, I'll bring the technicality into a conversation on a video, um, but... 
I want people to enjoy what they do. I don't want to start spilling off numbers and figures and grists and twists and this, that and the other. And I understand why they're needed. But if you're not doing it for competition level wools um, and you're not selling on a commercial level your hand spun wool, some people love that rustic feel of a hand spun wool and they will pay the money for it. Um, but I just want you to, to love what you do, fall in love with it, enjoy it before you start getting really into the nitty gritty and it becomes a passion. Um, I think sometimes when you start taking in all the technical advice, you forget why you fell in love with it in the first place. So that's just my outlook on it, my outtake on, on why I do what I do and why I teach the way I teach. I just want you to love what you do, enjoy what you do, and then once you've really got that under your belt, the spinning and the techniques and how to hold things and how to blend things and your colours and everything else, then go technical and fill your boots, love. If you want somebody to find, I mean, I can find you and point you in the right direction for YouTubers that go down that, that rabbit hole. For me, it's not overly important. It's not something that I rely on to be able to do my spinning. Um, I can give you the technical advice if you're looking for it. Um, and if I don't know it, I'll go and look it up or refresh my memory. Because I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy to point you in the right direction if you want more technical spinning advice. If you're just looking as a beginner to come and enjoy what you're doing and fall down that rabbit hole with a bit of fluffy grace then I'm your gal. So anyway, take care of yourselves. I hope you enjoyed this first insert of part one of the Alpaca Breed Study. Part two coming up next.